Every breath you take contains two substances that you wouldn't be able to survive without. One of them is obviously oxygen. The other one is water. If our air didn't contain any water, then the global average temperature of the Earth would be 15 degrees centigrade less and you would simply die. And uh, the water is responsible for much of what we call weather because the water content and the temperature of the air determines much of the weather system. But how does this system work? Well, to understand that we will simplify the system a lot. We will talk about the air, so that is uh, oxygen, nitrogen, argon and a lot of other gases as one component and then water as another component. So we will talk about this as a two component system. And the system we're going to study, sometimes it's only gas. So only air and water vapor. And sometimes it's water vapor, air and liquid water. To describe the system, we will use a number of different state variables, such as the dry temperature, the wet temperature, the dew point, the pressure, the relative humidity, the density, the enthalpy, and a few others. And to understand how the system works, we're going to talk about the vapor pressure. The vapor pressure tells us if you have a liquid here, and the gas above that, that uh, liquid is in equilibrium with, then the vapor pressure tells you the partial pressure of that substance immediately above the surface. Now, the vapor pressure is heavily dependent on the temperature, and the vapor pressure increases exponentially as the temperature goes up. What then is the boiling point? Well, the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So then a gas bubble can form in the liquid and expand and push away the atmosphere around it. That's the boiling point. All these different state variables, they are not all independent. But how many independent state variables are there? Well, you can calculate the number of independent state variables using Gibbs phase rule, which states that the number of phases plus the number of the degrees of freedom equals the number of components plus two. So in our system, we have two components, right? We have air and water vapor. And then sometimes we have only gas, and sometimes we have gas plus liquid water. So how many degrees of freedom do we have? If we have only gas, and if we have gas plus liquid. Take a few minutes and do that calculation. So I hope you now calculated that the number of degrees of freedom, if you only have gas, then you have three degrees of freedom, which means that if you know the total pressure, the density of the air and the enthalpy of the air, you can calculate all other state variables from these three. Now, if you have air and liquid water, so air in equilibrium with liquid water, you only have two degrees of freedom. What does that mean? Well, that means that the vapor pressure curve describes the system. You must be on the vapor pressure curve because the partial pressure of water in the air is exactly the vapor pressure. OK, so it's time to draw a diagram with all these different state variables. Let's start with the water content. How many kilograms of water we have per kilogram of air? You could choose another unit, but this is the common choice of units even though it's a bit strange. So kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air. And you can draw lines like this. So here's zero and that's 0 0.05. Now, usually we draw these diagrams for a certain total pressure. And if you know the total pressure and you know how many kilograms of water you have per kilogram of dry air, you can use the ideal gas law to calculate what the partial pressure of water is. So if the 
total pressure is known, you can directly calculate the partial pressure from the water content or vice versa. The next state variable we add is enthalpy. And we do it in a slightly non-traditional way. Not the 90 degrees between axes, but slightly slanted. So this is our enthalpy axis and this is our water content axis. And we do it so it's equidistant in both water content and enthalpy. So the distance between 0 and water content to 0 0.01 is the same as the distance from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02. And with enthalpy, the distance from 40 to 60 is the same as from 60 to 80. How do we calculate the enthalpy of the system? Well, we can as safely assume uh, that this is an ideal gas. And for an ideal system, you simply take the enthalpy of the different components. And we have two components. We have air and we have water vapor. And to calculate the enthalpy, well, you have to compare with some kind of standard state. And we will use zero degrees as our standard temperature and air as gas, obviously, because at zero degrees it's gas, and water as liquid. So to get the enthalpy, we need to find a path from the standard state to the state we have now. And enthalpy is independent of paths, you can do whatever. But let's do it this way, that you take the gas and then you simply heat it up to the temperature you want to have. And then for the water, let's first transfer it from liquid to gas and then heat the gas up. So then you get this equation. The next state variable we add to our diagram is temperature, or rather the dry temperature. That is the temperature you get when you stick a dry thermometer into your system, not a wet one. And here we come to the reason why we had a slightly slanted uh, system, not the 90 degrees between the axes. And that's because we want to fit as much possible useful information in as small space as possible. And we choose to slant the, the axis such that the zero degrees centigrade line is a horizontal line. And these are the temperature lines. And I've only drawn them in up to a specific point. And why is that? Well, if you go beyond that, you have more water than the vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure curve we talked about earlier, we can actually draw that in our Molière diagram, or diagram of the state variables. And that's this curve here. So for example, 30 degrees, slightly more than 40 millibar of vapor pressure. And you can't really go beyond that because then water starts to condensate out from the system and then leaves the gas. And you can draw different lines here for different relative humidities. So how much water we have in relation to the vapor pressure at that temperature. Time to test yourself to see if you have been paying attention. If you have liquid water in equilibrium with the moist air, how many degrees of freedom do you have? And where are you in this Molière diagram? Take a few minutes and answer that question. 